we all have such a desperate need to feel seen and heard, right? We all have this really desperate need just to feel like somebody is really witnessing our pain and our experience. And just somebody is noticing that, hey, you know, I'm going through something and acknowledging what's just been said, right? Um, So I find that normally what tends to escalate discussions um, is that, you know, a partner will come and will say something, something maybe a little bit challenging, or they'll just raise something. And when they do that, part of what they're really looking for is somebody to say like, okay, you know, Thank you for sharing that with me. Um, This is what I'm hearing from you. This is what I'm seeing from you. And you took vulnerability. Oftentimes it does take vulnerability for you to share that with me. Um, But oftentimes what happens is the partner, again, partner A will say something and partner B will immediately jump to their side of the story and they'll immediately start talking about themselves. And that right there is a a bit of a problem oftentimes because, um, you know, partner B will now they might have been listening, but they didn't indicate that. And oh, they just talk about themselves. Right, right. I see. And so partner partner A will kind of get louder, maybe. They'll say, Hey, were you hearing me? They'll go back to their point. Yeah. And so that's where you And then start no one's listening to each other. And <laughs> right. Absolutely. So you're saying it's important to like acknowledge that you heard your partner said before you move on to share your own thoughts. Because people need to be affirmed that they are seen or, and heard. Yes, that's that's exactly it. And I've started calling it the pause. I'm not sure if anyone else is calling it this or if there's any other terms coined about this one. Uh, but I've just started calling it the pause. Um, and so what I mean there is when somebody says something to you, literally just pause for a second and say, just acknowledge that something was said to you mm-hmm. in, in the simplest terms you can you can find. And if you can't figure that out, just paraphrase, literally paraphrase, you know, what they're speaking to you and just say, okay, I'm hearing such and such. I see. Yeah. yeah. And a big trick there is that when you paraphrase, you indicate that, hey, everything you've said to me, I've actually just internalized that and I have heard you. Right. Um, And knowing that now, you know, I'm going to continue this conversation. That's a really great tip. I think this works not just in a relationship, but in all your relationships, like non romantic in life, is this is just a communication skill to be able to, when someone's speaking to you, to pause and to actually affirm, okay, I'm, I'm hearing this, I've heard what you said, and then go on to say your point. Right. It's, it's something that works in all situations. Yes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And yeah, it's, it's really great that you pointed that out. Um, yes, it's great for friendships. It's great for a work environment. I, again, people really, when they come to you, they really want to be to know, they just want to have that normally that cue like, hey, you know, did you take that in? Um, and then it makes them much more receptive to you when you start to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, Yes, it's it's really applicable yeah. everywhere. And I think most of these things are. Mm-hmm. A common issue in relationships is this dynamic where let's say one of the partners refuses to like, they don't like confrontation. They don't want to talk about it, right? And what usually is like one person that wants to talk about it and talk it through and one person is like avoiding it. So what what do you recommend in that situation? What advice do you have to share? I think maybe one of the things that I would point to there is being mindful of how you approach your partner and also being mindful what comes up for you when you're having these discussions. And what you're describing is, sounds really similar to like a common, a really common dynamic, which is when you have somebody who might be a little bit more anxious, more antsy, and they really want to address something because if they don't, then they're fearing the worst. And then you have somebody who the more pushy their partner becomes because they're getting uncomfortable, the more they feel like, okay, you're becoming overbearing and this feels threatening to me. And so I want to run away from this conversation. Mm -hmm. So being mindful of how you approach your partner, um, as well as, you know, what is coming up for you and acknowledging that, hey, this is, you've got a lot of energy there, a lot of fear, a lot of worry that belongs to you, um, that, you know, might, you might need to work through. It's a combination of those two things. But in terms of the approach, when something is bugging you and you want to talk to them about it, you really should be thinking like, okay, 
what is bothering me? Like, how is this impacting me? And really focusing on conveying your personal experience and offering information. You really, what you shouldn't be doing is you shouldn't be criticizing your partner's character Mm. when you go to them with something, right? Like what you shouldn't be doing is you shouldn't be going after who they are as the person because you're just gotten to that point where you're so frustrated and you might be, you might have have every right to be frustrated, but that's hard to receive, right? People don't, respond well to criticism, right? So, you know, instead of saying, hey, you're such a slob, like that's, you like, again, you might have built up to that after a lot of incidents and things like that, but you're not, you're going to get defensiveness. Right. Um, so instead, yeah. So instead it would be, you know, something like, hey, like I can't, I can't relax and I can't find comfort in the home when it's in such disarray. And I would really <laughs> appreciate you know, of working together to get on a schedule and to clean some of this up. And I'd really appreciate your help. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about how you frame your message. I, I, that's a really great tip. It's to not attack and criticize right away, but to share your version of the story. Yeah. I, you know, the way I would put it is you really have to focus on turning inward, right? So turn inward. What is bugging it? Where's it coming from? Um, and, you know, what, would you like to happen, right? What is it that would make you feel more cherished, more loved, more peaceful, better? You know, what is it that you are experiencing when this negative thing is happening? So turn it inward. And again, that requires self-awareness, asking these critical questions of yourself. And that's a tough skill to cultivate. Um, And then taking that and offering it as information for your partner, for them to act on it and make adjustments. And again, Most people want to be there for you. They want to offer that to you, but they need they need to have this information to make those decisions, right? Right, right. And I like that you just call it information, right? Like don't put too much emotion into it. Like take that out. You're just sharing information and then they'll they'll process that information in their own way. It doesn't have to be in the way that you want them to process it, right? Yes. And uh, and again, I, I really like that you pointed that out, actually. Um, it does, it's not about not having emotions, right? Uh, people do get emotional and it's, it's normal. A relationship can handle some emotions and a little bit of conflict. But it's, you know, what I like about what you said there is that component that your partner will do with that whatever they do with that. And mm-hmm. that's really important. It's beyond your control at that point. <laughs> it's in, yes. within your control to share the information and then how they process it is on them. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. And that's so important. Um, and so that requires a little bit of trust and it, it, it just requires separating yourself from the outcome, right? A lot of us, uh, again, going back to maybe that more anxious person, um, leaning on that fear and that worry of, oh my God, what's going to happen. It's really working a little bit on that and trusting in your partner that they are listening. They are wanting to make changes and focusing on you to do your best, to create the best environment for them to come to you, to have these discussions, to problem solve together. Because once you've done that, then you've really done everything you could, um, but you're not kind of chasing them after, you know, chasing after them to make these changes. And so they're not feeling this, this needs to like, this something is overbearing, something is controlling, something is too much. Right. 